Hey everybody, it is Teacher Tuesday. Today I'm going to be doing a twist on one of the like one of my favorite videos, and that's the sweater romper from Lowland Kids. Um, so today we're going to be doing it a little bit differently, but I'm super excited about it today because I'm going to be using this super cute print. Um, it's a Golden June print, but it's actually printed at Little Ray's Fabric. Um, so I will link them down below. They did an amazing job. The owner is so friendly. Her name's Brittany. She's super friendly. Um, I love them. I placed an order um, and I'm about to place a second order. This is so adorable, you guys. And like I said, this is the Golden June file. I do believe it's called Boho Bloom or Boo Bloom, not Boho Bloom, Boho Boo. I think that's what this one's called. And I can't remember what this one's called, but look at this, how cute this one is, you guys. And she actually has these files in her shop. So Little Ray's Fabric has the Golden June files. So you don't have to buy them. She has the Golden June files that she's able to print in her shop. So if you want these printed, go to Little Ray's Fabric. She does an amazing job. Um, and as I said, I will print, I will print. I'm not gonna print anything. She prints this. But um, they have custom swim, custom minky, custom rib, which is what I'm using, rib knit. And then she has double brush poly. French Terry, I think she had some waffle on there, some velvet, some scuba, endless. It's just amazing. So this is what we're gonna be making today, as you saw in the cover photo as well. But this is what we're gonna be making. So cute with the little ruffles, so cute for fall. And it has the hood on there. It's just <laughs> laying it on my nose. But it's super cute and I did the snaps and I, um, I'm just super excited about this pattern. You, um, the only things that you're gonna need are the sweater romper like you previously had if you watched the other videos. So if you don't have that, go grab the sweater romper pattern from Lowland Kids. And then for the ruffle part here, you need the Dolman add-on pack, which includes this ruffle. So this ruffle can be added on to the Dolman tee, which we've done before. I think I've done it twice now. Um, one with a hack video and one with the um, Dolman tee. So let's get started. Okay, so for the pattern pieces, you need one of the back pieces cut on a fold. And then um, this little part here, if you don't want to add snaps, cut that piece off, the little triangle piece, how I fold it right here. Cut that off. Um, but if you are doing snaps, keep that on. You'll need the front piece cut on a fold here. Do the exact same thing. If you're not doing snaps, go ahead and cut that part straight right there. You'll need the hood piece, two mirrored images of that. The dolman ruffle piece, this is from the add-on for the dolman tee from Lowland Kids. I'll link it down below. You'll need two of those ruffles cut on fold. And then you will also need two cuff pieces. And I actually use the neck band piece to cut my cuff pieces because I like to lengthen them by about two inches um, just because I don't like to gather the cuff to fit. Just what I do, okay? All right, so here are my pieces. This is the back cut on a fold. I did keep this little triangular bit for my snaps. The front cut on a fold, same thing. Um, my two dolman ruffle pieces from that add-on that I said you'll need. Um, then the hood, two mirrored images there. And my two cuff pieces here. The first thing you're gonna do is get everything put together. So here's the ruffle piece. It's just this really long piece that was cut on a fold. Uh, first, I'm actually gonna hem it. I'm gonna hem this so I don't have to hem it in the round with my cover stitch. And you, you hem it up uh, three quarters of an inch. You fold this up and you hem one raw edge of this. So one long raw edge on either piece, on both pieces, you're gonna hem three quarters of an inch up. I'm gonna do that on my cover stitch. Um, I'm gonna do it off camera because you guys pretty much know how to hem. You just fold up that seam and either um, zigzag stitch if you have a sewing machine or serge across the edge if you have a serger and then top stitch with a uh, cover stitch. I mean, top stitch with a cover stitch or a sewing machine. Or you can do a blind hem on a serger if you just have a serger. All you have to do is fold that hem, hem allowance over to the three fourths like so. And then you would fold it back on itself like this so as you can see that's that folded back on itself and then you just serge that edge right there and then when you flip this out it would be kind of like that hemmed up okay so that's how you would do that um if you just have a serger you can totally hem on a serger so those dolman pieces three quarters of an inch on one long edge of both pieces okay then next you're gonna take the back piece of your sweater romper and put it down this fabric is so cute. All right, and it's so soft and stretchy. 
Um, but the colors are so beautiful. Little Race Fabric did a wonderful job on this. Okay. They have swim too, and that I've, I've placed an order for that. Or I'm placing an order for that, and I'm so excited. All right, so you're gonna put these right sides together and do your shoulder seams here. Really, you can do, let's see. You can do shoulder seams and side seams here. So you can do shoulder, and you can do the side seams here. So match up all your points. Don't do the crotch yet, and don't do anything to the neck yet. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do with that. Him and this dolman piece, the, the ruffle piece, Shoulder seams, side seams here. Cuffs, don't do anything to those yet because if you're doing snaps, you're gonna put these on a little differently than the ham hot method that we normally do. Um, but if you are doing, if you're not doing snaps, you wanna omit those snaps. All you need to do is, um, I explained earlier, you cut off that little triangle part on the both things, so that'd be like this, and you would serge the um, crotch right now. If you don't wanna do um, snaps, this piece would not be here. You would have cut that off, and then you would do shoulder seams, side seam, crotch seam, and apply cuffs like we normally do, which is the ham hot method. Fold hamburger style, fold hot dog style, and then that's the cuff right there. That would be the cuff, and then you just um, put that on there. I did lengthen these just in case you missed that part. I do lengthen my um, pieces here, even though it's ribbed nip, rib, ribbed knit I do lengthen it using the neck band piece and this is how big of a difference it is it's really not that much of a difference but I'll show you um it's about a an inch maybe difference so I add an inch to both sides so two inches I add to my um because you're cutting it on a fold so that one inch is on both sides so two inches total is the length I'm adding to this just because I find it really hard to stretch and I'm not about that gathering to fit the cuff thing. So I try to do it as easy as possible. Um, it will make the leg hole a tad bit wider than intended, but it, um, I tried it on my daughter and um, we didn't have really big issues. So, all right, so then that's how you would do it if you are not doing snaps. But if you're doing it and you're following it with me doing the snaps, you do not do the ham hop method with these. We are going to apply them um, wrong sides together like this later on so if you watch the other sweat, sweater romper video we're gonna apply the cuffs the exact same way that I did it previously all right and here's the hood and I've already got it right sides together two pieces right sides together and then you're gonna do this entire curved edge here and then once you get that curved edge done you're going to hem this uh, front part here and I like to do mine about a quarter or a half an inch but I hem my front facing up here. Um, so I'm gonna do all of that and I'll come right back and show you guys. Okay, so I've got everything done here. I didn't do anything to the cuffs because I'm adding snaps. I went ahead and hemmed up the one edge of that ruffle, and now I'm gonna put them right sides together, the one piece, and fold it the hamburger way here, and I'm going to serge or zigzag stitch this raw edge here. That's gonna be one of the ruffles. Do the exact same thing with the other ruffle. And you are gonna want to secure the end with the hem. Um, when you do that serge stitch there, and if you're using a sewing machine, you definitely want to back stitch there when you start or stop on that edge there because that edge is going to be on the outside. This edge is going to get caught in the round when you sew it onto the arm, but you definitely want to reinforce that edge. All right, so then you're going to serge those two raw edges of that. Your hood's done for now. Um, I just serged around this edge here and hemmed it up here. All right. And then moving on to this thing again. Okay, so I did the shoulder seams and side seams here. Crotch is still left undone because we're gonna add that snap pocket. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and add the cuff piece here. So I open up the romper like this and I'm gonna add my cuff piece here. But first, what I'm gonna do is fold this in half and I'm just gonna find my middle point here. And if you watch the bummy video, you know exactly what I'm doing. I'm just kind of quartering it up, but I'm just doing one point here. So on either side. So basically when I fold it, wrong sides together, I match up that point and I know that that is the middle there. Okay, do the same thing with the other one. 
And I also loved rib knit because it typically has vertical stripes. And so it's just so perfect because you know you're cutting correctly. You're cutting across the stretch um, and you know your grain line is going with the vertical um, rib and you know your stretch is going against the vertical, which is just, it's so perfect. Um, especially if you're a newbie, it's really easy to start with ribbed fabric. Um, once you get the settings down in your machine, it's super simple. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a pin here and I'm going to fold my cuff piece right, wrong, I mean, yeah, wrong sides together. So the right side should be showing. And that point here, I'm gonna add my raw edges to the raw edge of this part here. And I'm just matching up that middle point to the side seam. As you can see, that's what I did there. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And I just add this middle point here. So I folded the cuff wrong sides together, just matching it up to this side seam on the bottom, matching that middle point up. You can use more pins if you need to. I'm not gonna use them, um, but basically what you would do is, now that you have the middle point established, this point is gonna go to the crotch. And as you can see, you're gonna have to do some significant stretching to get that cuff to lay flat on the leg opening. This is when, if you don't feel like you're comfortable stretching, you would gather this leg hole um, edge. I'm not gonna gather just because it takes longer and I, I can just stretch this. So let's go over to the serger. We're gonna bring the ruffle pieces here. We're gonna pretty much bring everything that's left. We're gonna add the cuffs at the serger and we'll add, um, we'll have to gather the ruffles. Okay, so we've got the leg cuffs on here. First, let's do the um, ruffle pieces here. I'm gonna go ahead and just serge along here. Do the same thing here. You can absolutely cover stitch that in the round as well. I just like to do it in the flat because it's easier for me. cut my tails kind of long on the edge piece here where the hem is because I'm going to tuck those with the knit picker that I use. So I'm going to do this right here. Tuck that tail. And then we just have to gather these ruffles which I use elastic but you can gather them however you want to gather them. All right, so I've tucked those tails in there, which just means when I pull on this, it's not going nowhere, okay? All right, so now I'm going to quarter these up because I like to gather with elastic. Um, so pretty much if you've watched any of my videos where I gather, I use elastic. I do not prefer any other method. So I'm snipping this point that's opposite from the side seam on both ones. And then I'm going to match up that point that I snipped with the seam and then find both side points. So now I have four points that I can use to attach with elastic. So, or gather with elastic, I should say. And I'm just gonna be using quarter inch knit elastic. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this cuff piece here. Or it's not technically a cuff piece, it's a ruffle piece, but it, it's still kind of a cuff. You're gonna apply it just like a cuff for a sleeve. It's just gonna be ruffled. So match that back point up. Snip it. bit. Same thing on this side, snip it. And y'all don't pay attention to the way I hem this up. I did it really fast. <laughs> no judgment. All right, and so now we're gonna add the, um, we're gonna gather those in just a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and add the cuffs here to the, or leg bands, I guess I should say leg band to the leg curve. All right, so you're going to grab the crotch here because we've already marked that middle point. So grab the crotch. <laughs> that sounds really weird. Okay. And then you're gonna put it underneath your serger knife. And then I like to go ahead and make sure I get started. And I make sure that that needle has gone into the fabric so that when I move this, it's not gonna just pop out. It hit me in the face. Um, all right, so here we go. 
right and then what I like to do is I just pull the cuff part just enough so that it lays flat against the leg opening part here so I'm gonna go ahead and this is where I said if you need to use more pins use more pins I don't I don't I just don't <laughs> Absolutely do not surge over your pins. Alright, and so we've got to that middle point, and then we're gonna do the exact same thing on the back end now. Grab that crotch point, and then I like to just pull it, and then I kind of find a middle point in between the crotch point and the middle, and that's what I hold. And I do that little sliver of fabric. I do that section, and then I just regroup again. That's how I do it without pins, by the way. <laughs> Just constant regrouping and holding. Um, so my fingers are kind of like the pins, I guess you could say. All right. And then I'm gonna put the edge piece here. All right, so now the cuff is added on there and this is what it looks like flipped up just to show you. That's what it looks like on. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch this down with my cover stitch. That is completely optional, but I'm gonna go do this other side before I do anything else. So I'll just basically repeat the same thing with the other side. And I'm just going to top stitch this down really fast. I'm going to do it off camera, but pretty much you just fold that seam down that way and then just top stitch on this side alongside the edge. Okay, so this is what that looks top stitched down. All right, and then um, you can go ahead and get the crotch part done if you want to. And I like to just serge this edge here. make it nice and clean um, and I just top stitch it with my sewing machine here uh, I do tuck my tails on this part here but that's what that looks like once it's um, surge. I'm doing the same thing with the other side. And of course, I didn't mention this, but if you've watched the other sweater, um, I keep calling it sweater, just sweater. That's what I want to say. Sweater romper video. And same pattern. Um, I just did it differently. Um, and I added elastic into the legs. The only reason I'm not adding elastic into these legs right now is because I'm using rib knit and I stretched it to fit. Um, I did lengthen it by the two inches though, but I am just stretching it to fit. Um, if I was using a fabric that is not stretchy, I would have absolutely added more than two inches to these cuffs and I would have added elastic into the cuffs, so into the leg band part here. Um, so if you're using a non-stretchy fabric, just go back to the sweater romper video that I did previously and do everything but the sleeves the exact same way. Okay, if you're using a non-stretchy fabric. Not wanting to go, whatever. Okay, so those parts are done, and then literally all you have to do now is fold it up like that and top stitch it down. I do like to use interfacing, and I just cut a two-inch piece inner piece. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> a two-inch piece of interfacing. And then I just fold it like this. I fold it over the interfacing and I iron, I iron the interfacing on the fusible interfacing and I do the two inch piece here and then I fold it over an inch so that interfacing is doubled up and then that's what you do. So I'll show you guys what it looks like. All right, so here's my two inch piece of interfacing and then I like to just cut it down to size. Um, so I know I'm gonna be flipping this sweater romper piece like this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press it with my iron 
just to give it a memory press. Just a quick memory press here. All right, so then I know that I want to cut it that much. So I'm gonna go ahead and be careful not to cut your fabric. So I cut it to size there. So now I'm gonna open that back up and I'm going to just add that there. I do like to, um, I learned using water on it helps it steam if you don't have a steam iron, which I do have a steam iron, but it doesn't work. <laughs> this was actually gotten at a yard sale, so that's just proof that you can use whatever <laughs> you need to use to get the job done. So just iron this down. Once that's on there, you do this right here and you'll fold that up and then that's the placket there that you do. The same thing with the other side. And then you can hem or you can press it again if you want to, just to make it easier. All right, we're gonna go top stitch that down. All right, so we're top stitching the snap plackets down. I've already got that memory pressed, and then I'm just going to add it in here. Using a straight stitch, definitely gonna back stitch when I start. And back stitch when you end, and then that's what that snap placket looks like when it's done. That side, this side, the same thing with the other side. And then cut those tails and that snap like it's done. You'll just add your snaps to that. There and there. Okay, so now what's left is gathering the ruffles, attaching the ruffles, putting the hood on, and putting the snaps on. So gather these ruffles however you like to gather. I will show you how I like to gather though, just to get that perfect gathers every time. Quarter inch knit elastic. Measure the opening and literally I just do this. And you're gonna double it. And then I literally just hold it. Do it again, and I'm cutting it exactly because I've learned that if you're surging this on, um, it will stretch just a little bit more. So that piece, and then um, you might want to do the same thing again, or you could use that piece that you did. All right, the exact same thing again. Measure the opening. All right, so then those are our two pieces here, and then I'm just going to go ahead and overlap it like this just about a quarter of an inch and a zigzag stitch over that. I'll be right back. Okay, so then this is what the elastic looks like. And then I'm just gonna grab a Sharpie over here that I used to quarter my elastic. We've already quartered up our ruffle pieces here and I'm gonna quarter up my elastic. So I like to put the one in the back mark on that overlapped edge piece. And then I just, so that piece and that piece and then match those two points up and then you have your quartered elastic quartered elastic and then of course if you don't have a sewing machine you can't do it this way um because it's going to be bulky just doing it with a sewing machine or with a serger um so you need to learn how to serger or if you just have a serger you can actually gather with your serger i personally don't like it but a lot of people do it's just not my thing so i'm just quartering these all right then you're gonna need some pins Okay, four pins for each one. All right, so what you're gonna do here is, on the edge that's not hemmed, you're going to quarter it up. So, it's just like the tiny version of the Napa that I did. It's just tiny um, when I gathered. So then I'm just gonna match up the points with the marks on my elastic. And I am leaving a quarter inch 
um, above the elastic when I pin because that's what I'm going to serge off when I actually attach this um, to the armhole. Alright, so now we're going to go to the sewing machine and straight stitch, a long stitch, and I'll show you what to do. I'm going to change this to a straight stitch, the longest it'll go, and I'm going to start on this seam here, just like this, put it underneath here, making sure that quarter inch seam allowance is up here. I am trying to get the needle, the straight stitch on the top part of the elastic, it doesn't really matter. Um, but you won't be able to see it if it's on the top part. Sometimes if you go too far down, you'll be able to see it. But literally, I'm just stretching the elastic to lay flat on the fabric. And so do this slow and steady. Alright, so now we're here at the serger again, and I'm just going to cut these little tails off. So then there's the ruffle, that's what it looks like. There's a fuzzy on there, okay. And then so you're going to grab the arm side here, the armhole, and going the garments inside out the cuff is or the ruffle is right side out I like to put the seam on the armpit part and so literally I'm just gonna open up this arm opening like this and this is that side seam that's the shoulder seam I'm gonna put the ruffle inside here and I just kept my pins in and I'm just gonna remove them and pin it down so I got my side seam, the armpit seam here, and I'm just matching up the point on my elastic, that back seam, like this, and I'm going to go ahead and remove, I'm just going to use two pins on this because it's a small opening and the elastic should fit perfectly, um, so I'm just going to do it there, and then up here, I'm going to remove that pin, I'm not going to use it because I'm literally about to put this right in the surgeon. And I'm going to match up that point on my elastic there. And I'm going to cut off that part that's above the elastic. So I'm going to cut right up against the elastic. So once I get that needle and thread in there, that's when I grab the ruffle and the arm opening here. Making sure that that ruffle edge and the arm opening are all matching up. And just so you guys get a better look at what I'm doing exactly. So I am sur surging off this part right here, right up against the elastic, okay? Just to give you a better idea of what I'm doing exactly, because I know sometimes you can't see exactly what I'm doing. Just going around. And I do stretch a, a little bit. Um, it's not necessary. Um, I just like to stretch a little bit, just a smidge. You're using elastic, so it'll kind of um, strip or snap back almost. So just making sure those raw edges are still lined up. They haven't wiggled on you. Sometimes you will kind of need to push it through. Um, just really depends. I find myself needing to push it through. is not my favorite knit picker and it's, I'm struggling with it. <laughs> Alright, and then as you can see, you flip this out and you can top stitch it down if you want to. 
but that's what the ruffle looks like on the garment. I'm gonna do the other one really fast. Tuck in this last tail here. And then all we have to do is top stitch if it's if you want to, that's optional. You don't have to do that. And then add the hood. And I'll top stitch at the very end. But then when you flip this thing out, I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like flipped out. That is what the ruffle looks like on the arm there. So it's super cute. And the, the arm is still super stretchy. Um, and that's what the elastic looks like on the inside. Um, as you can see, it's enclosed in the seam here. So um, I like to top stitch it down. So I'm just gonna fold that seam back and then top stitch on the seam. But I'll do that later. Next is the hood. I'm gonna flip this back inside out. And then now you're going to add the hood and then snaps and then you're done. So I grabbed these points here, shoulder seam points. Now I'm just gonna find the middle front and middle back of my neck. So I've got my middle back and my middle front. I'm just making a small notch here. All right. So I've got that done. That's what it looks like. And then what I'm gonna do, my hood, I'm gonna flip right side out. And then that's what my hood looks like there on my hand. So then it has this back seam here and that's what I'm gonna match up on the inside of my neck hole, the back seam to the back, middle back of that um, neck hole opening. So I just put a pin there and then I walk it around to the front and I drop this hood in the neck hole just to get it out of the way like this cause you want it to be in the neck hole. And I'm gonna grab another pin and what I'm gonna do here is my front point. So now the hood is inside and right sides are touching each other. Um, so then I'm going to grab that part right there, the edge part, and I'm going to just, um, I like to go ahead and put it where the cover stitch hem, so my hem part there. And then I'm gonna grab this other one over here and just overlap them. It really doesn't matter which one you overlap. I just like to overlap them to my cover stitch part here. So it looks about like that, overlapped. And then I'm just gonna pin them right here. And then you can choose to add more pins if you want to on the sides here. As you can see, um, it doesn't stretch all the way. So I like to just go ahead and find a point in the middle. This is how I literally do it. I just walk my fingers to the middle, pop this up, and put a pin on the side seam here. Same thing on the other side. All right, so then I'm gonna start right here on the side seam that I just put a pin in, the shoulder seam here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna start this on. Move the pins as you go. And then this is the middle back right here. And I am gonna add a tag to this one because this is a collab that I will be doing um, soon. So look out for that. <laughs> so I'm just adding the, the tag right here. Oops. I'm adding the tag right here to the back seam. Middle back. That's the last side point until I'm back to the other side. So you'll just pay attention here. So you don't, your edges don't move. Remove your pin and I like to just kind of hold on to it. Just in case it wiggles a little bit. Overlap where you started.
and then tuck your tail. There's my tag in the back. That's how it's easily added in there. Go ahead and cut these little strings that are stuck in here. All right, so I'm gonna flip this out and show you guys what it looks like before we add the snaps. And I'm just gonna top stitch off camera and I'll show you guys what it looks like at the very end. But this is now how the hood looks. Overlapped, as you can see right there. And then there's the ruffles one more time. So I'm going to top stitch the ruffle part here and I'm going to top stitch the seam down around the neck. I'm just going to find it lays better. So then, then we'll unsnap so soon I'm done. snaps but you can go watch the other video to do the snaps they're super simple um, I use cam snaps I can link that down below if you want um, I'm gonna do the snaps really fast just so I can show you what they look like on right, so that is what I use So I added those snaps really fast. If you want an in-depth tutorial on that, absolutely check out the other sweater romper video I did. Um, but this is what it looks like all done. It is super adorable. Hold on, the little ruffles on the side are so cute. So cute, ruffly, ruffly, ruffly. And then the hood, of course, is super cute. And the snaps. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and um, we'll see you guys next Tuesday. Bye.